Recently, the thing to do if you're a YouTube tech reviewer is to find the oldest, most rubbish motherboard you can and see if the RX 480 will work. It's a lot of fun. I thought it might be interesting to get on board this latest craze and in doing so, add a little twist by also testing with the GTX 1060. So I began digging out the oldest and most forgotten about hardware in the office. My search turned up a few AM3 boards along with a couple of LGA 1156 boards. The only problem was they all worked with the RX 480, booted into Windows, played games and well, they worked. Rather than head down to the local electronics recycling centre to see what garbage they had lying around, I gave up on the idea and instead changed gears to something else, something I feel is even more interesting. Having already dusted off an old Core i5 750 system along with a Phenom 2 X4 955 system from the same era, I had a light bulb moment. Why not test both systems using the RX 480 and GTX 1060 to see how these new mid-range GPUs compare in old systems? More than likely, gamers making the upgrade to a current gen mid-range GPU aren't rocking the latest Core i7 processor overclocked to 4.5GHz. Instead, many are probably running a more affordable previous gen Core i3 or Core i5 processor, or alternatively, one of AMD's Phenom or FX processors. So we've seen how the 480 and 1060 compare when they aren't being restrained by CPU limitations, but how do they get on with a much lesser processor? In this video, we're going to find out. I should point out that neither the i5-750 or x4-955 have been overclocked or tweaked in any way. Included purely for comparison is my standard GPU test rig as I already have the results for both GPUs in this system. This is an overclocked PC so I'm not trying to make a direct comparison here but rather show how fast these mid-range GPUs are when not hampered by a system bottleneck. Starting with The Witcher 3, we see the GTX 1060 was 11% faster than the RX 480 on my 6700K test system. Moving to the i5-750 system reduced the 1060 performance by 30%, but despite that, the 1060 was still 10% faster than the RX 480 on the old Core i5 rig. Moving to the Phenom 2 X4 system, the 1060 drops a further 11%, down to 38 FPS. Here we find that on the AMD system, the RX 480 and 1060 deliver the same 38 FPS average. For benchmarking Star Wars Battlefront, we use a single player tutorial which isn't very CPU demanding at all, making this primarily a GPU test. As such, the GTX 1060 delivers very similar performance on all three systems. The RX 480 provides very similar performance on both the Intel rigs, but does slow down quite a bit on the Phenom system. Fallout 4 is a massive system resource hog, so I'm not surprised to see some major variations in performance here. That said, the performance trends remain quite similar for the most part. Looking at the minimum frame rate, the 1060 was 20% faster than the RX 480 on the Core i7-6700K test system. Meanwhile, on the Core i5-750 system, the 1060's minimum frame rate was 27% higher. Finally, on the Phenom 2 X4 system, we find the 1060 is just 5% faster. The division shows pretty similar performance trends across all three systems and it's really only the RX 480 and Phenom 2 X4 combo that sees a big hit in the minimum frame rate department. Armor 3 isn't a CPU intensive game, at least not in the way that many seem to believe. The game is poorly optimised and doesn't utilise more than a single CPU thread heavily. As a result, CPUs with strong single thread IPC performance win out. The highly clocked 6700K shows this as the GTX 1060 averaged 72 FPS. This result was reduced to just 40 FPS with the i5-750 and then 31 FPS with the Phenom 2x4. Interestingly, the RX 480 actually compared better with the GTX 1060 on the slower processors. Mirror's Edge Catalyst isn't a CPU intensive game and as a result the margins remain fairly consistent across all three systems. Total War Warhammer is an interesting title that provided interesting results, though be aware we only tested using DirectX 11 mode. The RX 480 actually looks better in relation to the GTX 1060 on the slower systems, which is pretty surprising. The Doom results are particularly telling and honestly, I was expecting to see more results like this. Using either OpenGL or Vulkan, we see the RX 480 plays considerably worse than the GTX 1060 on the older systems. While the RX 480 was faster on the 6700K system using Vulkan by a 16% margin, it's actually 21% slower when using the Core i5-750 rig and 29% lower on the Phenom 2 system. In Ashes of the Singularity, we see DX12 does a good job of keeping the RX 480 in the game when testing on the slower systems. It was 15% slower than the 1060 on the 6700K test system when running the game in DirectX 11 mode. When we move to the Core i5-750 machine, the 480 is now 35% slower. However, using DirectX 12, we see the same 6% decline in performance. Well, I didn't manage to run into any compatibility issues with my Radeon RX 480 on these old systems, but I did end up finding some interesting results. 
For the most part, the 480 didn't fare nearly as poorly against the GTX 1060 as I thought it might. There were of course exceptions though, such as Doom and Ashes of the Singularity using DirectX 11. It was interesting, although admittedly not all that surprising, to see just how much slower these new mid-range graphics cards were on these old quad-core systems. It's also been quite a long time since I've seen the Core i5-750 face the Phenom 2x4955, and honestly I've forgotten how much better the Intel processor was for gaming. The performance difference is likely being amplified by the use of modern games that take full advantage of quad-core processors, with the exception of Armour 3. So in short, it appears you're going to be seeing similar performance margins between the 480 and 1060 on older hardware. On that note, you're also going to see considerably greater performance when using a modern processor, or at least a relatively modern processor, overclocked. I didn't have time to overclock the Core i5 and Phenom 2x4 processors for this video, but perhaps I can do a more in-depth video in the near future, featuring more GPU and CPU configurations for you guys if you guys are keen to see it. What did you guys think of these results? Were they surprising? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.